you know, we all know there's dehumanizing happening here on our own shores. Uh, mm -hmm. We're erasing womanhood. Uh, mm -hmm. We're calling women bleeders and chest feeders. And, and not to my face, they're not. And not more than once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, not yeah. to my face, they're not. I mean, and we're, not we're... more than once, they won't call me that. <laughs> Promise you that. So we're, so women here, and, and I think a lot of people don't, don't really realize to the extent, people say, oh, it's, it's silly words, but we've talked about on past episodes, words have meaning, words have power. Yes. Um, I don't Why do think you think they, they want to change them? Why like, do you think exactly. they are so desperate to change them if they don't matter? Exactly. Because those who command the English language really have yes. the cultural power. That's really yes. what it comes down to. Yes. Um, and there's a great uh, f bill being uh, put through in Florida. Um, it's called, I'm actually going to pull up the text on the screen. This is called, okay. um, this is called, uh, well, now I'm, I'm going to cut this out because I, I need to find the, okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Come on, man. I was doing good up until now. Okay. Florida House Bill 599. The bill says, the bill prohibits any adverse personnel action, which would mean the discharge, suspension, transfer, or demotion of an employee or a contractor or the withholding of bonuses, the reduction in salary or benefits, or any other adverse action taken against an employee or a contractor within the terms and conditions of employment by an employer for failing to adhere to any company policy that compels speech as it relates to, quote, personal titles and pronouns. Now, this bill, and what, one of the things that makes this bill so great mm -hmm. is that it actually defines sex as the classification of a person as either female or male based on the organization of the body of such person for a specific reproductive role as indicated by the person's sex chromosomes, naturally occurring sex wow. hormones. Wow, I love internal, it. I love it. Yep, and internal and external genitalia present at birth. This is as close as you can get. This is to, to mm -hmm. just saying the transgender ideology is false. This yes. is like the closest you can get to a bill mm -hmm. flat out saying gender ideology is BS. It's false. Yeah, and you cannot make people believe or embrace that. I watched a live today with a guy. He was like, well, I was born a woman. I was just in a man's body. No, you were born a man. Exactly. Now, and let me so, go even, yeah. let me go even further here. It also says, it is the policy of the state that a person's sex is an immutable biological trait and that it is yes. false to ascribe to a person a pronoun that does not correspond to such person's sex. This section does not apply to individuals born with a genetically or biochemically verifiable wow, disorder so cool. of sex development. So mm -hmm. for all these lefties that are going to come out and they're going to talk about the less than 1% of the population that's intersex, yeah. this bill covers it. This yeah. bill covers wow. it. Now, an employee or a contractor may not be required as a condition of employment to refer to another person using that person's preferred personal title or Good. pronouns if such that's personal title or pronouns do not correspond to that person's sex. Yes. An employee or a contractor may not provide to an employer his or her preferred personal title or pronouns if such personal title or pronouns do not correspond to his or her sex. Then, an employee or contractor may not be asked by an employer to provide his or her personal pronoun t personal title or pronouns or be penalized or subjected to adverse personnel action for not providing his or her Ooh. preferred personal title or pronouns. Wow. So this is a very – now, here's where it gets even better, and you're going to love this, I think. Yeah. Um, it is an unlawful employment practice for an employer to take adverse personal action against an employer or contractor because of the employer or contractor's deeply held religious or biology-based beliefs. Wow. I love this, though. Including a belief in traditional or biblical views of sexuality and marriage or the employer or contractor's disagreement with gender ideology. They flat out say it. Whether yeah. those views are expressed by the employee or contractor or, or away from the work site. The reason why this is so impressive is they're not mm -hmm. just saying religious people who may have traditional views on gender, mm -hmm. but people who are just common sense people who believe in Yeah, biology. people who just believe in biology. People who just exactly. believe and in biology. Exactly, and that's science. what I think is so yeah. different about this because you often hear religious yeah. exemption, religious exemption, religious exemption for things like abortion or uh, same-sex marriage. But this is flat out saying you don't even have to be religious. You just have to be yeah. someone with common sense. You just have to have a couple of wrinkles on your brain <laughs> to absorb legitimate information. Exactly, exactly. So what do you think, Terry? This, I love this bill. I, love I do this. too. I do too because I'm not going to conform to somebody's gender delusion and I probably would have been fired in Florida. <laughs> One of my favorite things about this is just – 
you know, we have civil protections for religious beliefs, but the term biology based beliefs, yep. it's like bravo. Yeah. Bravo. Because I believe in I believe in actual science that says men are men and women are women. Because what's gonna happen if it didn't have that biology based belief part, what you'd mm-hmm. probably see is you'd see efforts by opposing counsel in litigation to try to make people who are disagreeing with this, trying to make them prove that they're sufficiently religiously conservative. Yep. They're, and I think that's where you'd run into trouble. Like you mm-hmm. have people having to justify that they're religious enough that it's causing yeah. them to disagree like this. Yeah. Do you go to and, church or do you go, Yeah. Yeah. And maybe there's some religious people who, um, Maybe they're, maybe they're Christians, maybe they're not. Maybe they're just biology-believing people. Maybe they don't go to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. Maybe they go to church, but they go once a month, and they don't go every yeah. month. And exactly. you're going to have opposing counsel saying, well, it's not necessarily religious-based if you're not that religious. Here right. you're covered. And yeah, I think you that's don't do these right. things. You don't follow these things in the Bible, so obviously you're not religious. Yeah, Exactly. And that's what's so great about this. Now, why should I care about this so much? Because... I don't live in Florida and, um, you know, I haven't been harmed by this. I'm going to show you, and this is something, this is going to boggle your mind. When I ha- I'm not going to disclose what my, what my job is or where I work, but mm-hmm. um, I had to go through a sexual harassment training. Obviously, we shouldn't be sexually harassing people. I think left and the right can just agree on that. No sexual um, harassment. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe our president <laughs> would, would disagree. Um, but I mean <laughs> – I, you know, if you want to run for office one day, you got to get some practice in. I mean, you're never going to get on the Epstein list, but, you know. So, so we, we had to watch this video and it had mm-hmm. some of the standard stuff that like, I have no issue with mm-hmm. you know, about, you know, you can't cat call and all that kind of stuff. You can't g- g- do quid pro quo, um, mm-hmm. have sex with me and I'll give you a promotion. That's all stuff we can agree on. Mm-hmm. Now, there was a section here that basically models how you have to react when somebody misgenders somebody else. So I'm going to play this. I actually got the, the okay. video clip here. This is from the training that I okay. had to sign off on. And it was, and, and this is totally applicable to this bill because if I had not completed this training and signed that I would follow these policies, I wouldn't have been able to be employed at this right. organization. So mm-hmm. here we go. You seem happy today. Yeah, tomorrow's Friday. And I can't wait for a picnic pup pup fun day. Listen, I was thinking, maybe we can do guys against girls. Guys against girls. You're always talking about how good you are. Now you have an opportunity to prove it. But what about Steve? You mean Stephanie? In the scenario you just watched, Nick dead named his coworker Stephanie. How should he respond to Valerie correcting him? Let's watch two examples of what might happen next. Sorry, I keep forgetting. What I'm trying to say is, what team should he be on? She. Hi, Stephanie. Hey. We were just trying to go over our puppet teams for tomorrow. And uh, are you ready to be with the girls or? Actually, I just soon stay here, catch up on a few things, and maybe go home early if that's okay. I think that's Bruce Jenner, by the way. Sure. That'd be okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Okay, here's, here's scenario two. Okay. What about Steve? Stephanie. You're right. Thank you. What about Stephanie? Well, Stephanie is a girl, so she would play for the girls' team. But I don't think we should do guys versus girls. I think it should be my team versus your team. Sounds like a winner. Hi, Stephanie. Hey. I heard that you are an excellent putt-putt player. I have been playing since I was seven years old. She's on my team. <laughs> so what do you what do you think about that? Today? He's on my team. That would have been me. She she's on my team. <laughs> oh. So yeah, I had to watch. So I had to watch that. Um, then there, before that, there was actually a whole glossary. Of I, I had to learn the definition of dead naming, misgendering, and then I had to watch these scenarios and affirm I would comply and I would act out similarly to these scenarios. And I was like, what what dystopian planet am I on? Am I on? Yeah. Well, you're telling me that I have to 
I. <laughs> so you never had to. I'm sure you never had to do anything like this. Before. I haven't. I haven't trained it now. You know, I get like I train twice a year because of being a contractor, I have to take the clients' training and mm -hmm. then I have to take my company's training. Um, so I go through all this training twice a year, and I haven't seen that one yet. So it may, it may be common, depending on what. what... Yeah, I always get in trouble when I'm doing training because I bust out laughing at all the scenarios. <laughs> Actually, you know what? If your employer is going to be based where you live, you might not have to. You might well, not be yeah, to. and also uh, my contractor is based out of Texas. So, oh. uh, you know, uh, now I if I work for somebody who's based, you know, the client is based in another state, like yeah. Wackadoo, California, I may have to to go through that, but...